Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful moment once more to be in the presence of God. I bless the Lord for you who is viewing. I give God all the glory for you are with me. And I thank God because I know that he ordered your steps to make this, um, uh, to take this opportunity to join me in prayer. I give God glory for this father that he has brought us. I believe that something has been happening as you've been praying together with me. We can never make prayer a prayer unless we pray it. We know that prayer is practicing it. There's no shortcut. There's no saying uh, you're watching somebody praying without you yourself praying. So thank you so much for those few minutes that you take to pray together with me. I believe we are changing a lot in the spiritual realm and very soon we are going to realize the results. I believe that God is going to fulfill his word as he has spoken it concerning our lives. Tonight we are still um, praying against evil and wrong foundations in our lives. But before we begin, let's have a prayer, an opening prayer, and then we will end, uh, enter into a short session of a, a bit of study and then we will get into prayer in Jesus' name. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we worship your name. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. What a miracle working God you are. We thank you because surely we have seen what you can do and we have no doubt that you are with us, that you have good plans for us and that Lord you always want to, to fulfill those plans. Thank you so much Lord for another opportunity to call upon your name and we commit ourselves before you. We engage the power of the Holy Spirit we pray, Lord, that you may enable us to pray right. We ask you, my Father, to open your ears and attention to us. That, Lord, as we call upon your name this evening, you shall hearken unto us. Be glorified, our King. We know we are nothing with, without you. That's why we are in need of you this hour. Be glorified, be exalted, as you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit combine with us, that we may make it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we are still talking about dealing with evil, stroke wrong foundations in our lives. Uh, just to recap a bit, I want us today to dwell more in prayer than the, uh, than the teaching. But I want to take some short or some few minutes to recap on what uh, we began like two weeks ago. This is the third week that we are dealing with foundations. And as I began, I said that this is a very wide topic. And many ministers take like a few or several series for them to exhaust it. And even as we come to an end uh, in prayer over this um, topic, it's not like we have fully exhausted it. I would encourage you to go further and study more because we know that foundations, are, uh, each one of us has some, uh, some foundations that they have to deal with. And foundations, we say that this, uh, this is a basis on which something stands on. So we talked about uh, three types of foundations. I talked about the family foundation, I talked about the religious foundation and the territorial foundations. We dealt with those ones on, the first, um, on our first session of prayer. Last week we dealt with uh, the pending transactions that our forefathers made pending transactions i say those are the uh, the the transactions or the processes they did not complete vows they did not fulfill covenants they did not keep they are still pending and they are still like uh, uh they want to affect our lives because the deities and the powers they worshiped them they are still indebted to us so that is why i said it is important to deal with them we also dealt with the selective traits from our parents. These are like behaviors, habits, diseases, and what have you. We talked about that. You can visit our previous broadcast and you will be able to understand better if you have not been with us. We also talked about, uh, we dealt with wrong identities that the enemy has given unto us. We realized that the enemy can give us an image that does not belong to us or can give us a name that does not belong to us, or a smell, or something of the kind, a veil can clothe us, 
can cover us and make us who we are not. People see us and say they see a different person from who we are. So those are the three things that we del dealt with last uh, in the last broadcast. Now tonight I want us to deal with covenants, foundational covenants. The covenants that our forefathers made on our behalf. You know, as these men and women were making these covenants, they were not making it for themselves alone. They were saying us and our children. And as they were talking about their children, they were talking you about you and me. That today, there is an evil flaw coming into us because of the covenants that they made. And before I go on, I know somebody is asking you, now what is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement between two parties, or in simple terms, between two people. And this, uh, in this agreement, there is normally a promise uh, or things people shall do as long as they are partnering. So this is, these are the covenants that we are talking about tonight. The agreements that were made between our forefathers and other people, that were made between our fathers and other people. They agreed on some things and they said us and, I, and our children, we shall do this. We shall go this way. We shall worship here. We shall be committed to serving you. And as they were saying so, they were talking to their deities and to their gods and what have you. So we very well know that as long as you have come from an African society, you are affected by these foundations because initially our forefathers never worshipped the true and the supreme God. I've said that once before. They never worshipped worshipped the living God. They were worshipping deities and gods and spirits and they were bowing to them and they were committed to them and they made vows to them and they also made covenants to them. Now these covenants are flowing into our lives and affecting us. I said uh, foundations, you don't have to be the one who made that, uh, like you are, not, you, are, you are likely not the person who laid it, but somebody else laid it, but that person is connected to you either by blood or in one way in parenting you or in one way or another. So that is why it is important for us to deal with foundations. And it is a very good thing or it would be a very good thing if you deal with foundations totally. That is why I said, do not deal with foundations now and forget. Every time you feel there is a need for you to, uh, to deal with an evil foundation, then take action in prayer and deal with it. So tonight we want to destroy every evil covenant that was made against our lives, against the generations to come. When our fathers made those mistakes, as they continually made wrong choices against the instructions of God. God himself in the Bible says that he shall punish such a people up to the, fourth and, uh, up to the third or the fourth uh, generation. So probably you are, you are being punished for something that you never did. Or you are getting affected by the mistakes of your forefathers and uh, the people who went long time ago. Today we are dealing with divorces and separations because of people who went long time ago. And we need to deal with that because we have been given the power to cast down thoughts and arguments and powers under our feet to the subjection of the name of Jesus Christ. Now tonight, I want us to destroy every evil foundation made against us, every evil covenant made against our lives. After destroying that evil covenant, now we are going to plant ourselves into the right covenant with the Lord. You know, there's something that eats a person, there's nothing that eats a person more than acknowledging there's a problem in their life. Every time we live in denial that there's a problem in our lives, then it continues to eat us. But when we realize there's a problem and deal with it, then we are able to uproot it from its roots and destroy it completely. Because unless we make the right, right foundations, there's a distance we will not go. There's a height we will not climb. There's a depth we will not go. 
So we need to deal with these evil covenants that were made against our lives. And I want us to read the book of Genesis, chapter 17, and verse 7. What does it say? And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you, throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. Wow! This is the word of God. And these are the words God is speaking to Abraham. We are going to read the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians chapter 3. We are going to see how us, as um, children of God, become descendants of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. It says this, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. Hairs according to his promise. I hope you have understood that. That if you are of Christ, now that is where you should ask yourself, who am I? Whom do I belong to? If you are Christ, the Bible says, then you are Abraham's offspring. You know, we have had people mocking us and asking us, how, why do we say that we inherit from Abraham? How can we partake in the promises made to God, made, made by God to Abraham? How can we become heirs of, of whatever was Abraham's? Now, this is the answer that you should give to such a person. Any person who poses such a question to you, give them Galatians 3.29. Tell them that I am in Christ, therefore I am an offspring of Abraham. And I'm an heir according to all the promises. That means that all the promises that God made to Abraham, you are an heir. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful thing to know. That I'm an heir to what God promised to Abraham. I am an heir to what God said to Abraham. As God was saying that whoever blesses you, I will bless. I am also in that promise. I am a partaker in it. Hallelujah. That means that whoever curses you is cursed by God. Whoever blesses you is blessed by God. The promises that Abraham shall be a father of nations is also your promise. Because you are in Christ and you have become a child of Abraham. Therefore, inherited, inheriting as he inherited. What a wonderful thing. Glory to the name of the Lord for making you and I partake us in the promises. We are going to claim those promises tonight after breaking evil covenants against our lives. Then now we are going to ask God to remember the covenant that he made to Abraham, to him and all his descendants and generations, you and I included that we are going to make up to be part of the covenant that the father gave unto us and we are going to read also the book of exodus in chapter 2 verse 23 and 24 the book of exodus chapter 2 verse 23 and 24 in the course of those many days the king of egypt died and the people of israel groaned under their bondage the people of Israel were under the bondage. This particular generation is not the generation that had sinned against God. It's not the generation that had moved to Egypt. Now they are suffering for mistakes which are not theirs. And they are groaning because of that bondage. The same way we are groaning today because of the mistakes of our fathers and the mistakes of our mothers and the mistakes of our forerunners in this life and in this faith. We are groaning under that bondage. We are groaning because we are in pain for mistakes that were not ours. And you see what happened. The Bible says, um, verse 23, that, and the people of Israel groaned under their bondage and cried out for help. And their cry under bondage came up to God. They cried out for help. And we are going to cry out for help to God. We are going to call upon him to see the bondages that are in our lives because of the mistakes of our fathers. 
We are going to call upon his name that he may come and release us from this bondage. As the children of Israel called, we are also going to call upon him. And remember what he says in his word. Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. You don't know what the Lord can do when you call upon him. And verse 24 of that book of the, of the Exodus chapter 2 says, And God saw the people of Israel, and God knew their condition. Oh, hallelujah. God knows your condition. God knows that you are suffering. God knows that you desire to go high, but your foundation is shaky. God knows there's a covenant that was made against you and your children. God knows that there's a sacrifice that followed that covenant. God knows that these people were not just joking. They were serious as they were making that covenant. God knows your condition. He knows that you are suffering from that disease because of a covenant that was made. He knows that you are suffering in marriage because of the mistakes of your forefathers. He knows your condition. But he says, ask, ask, ask. Unless you ask, the Lord cannot answer. You know, uh, from the explanation of prayer, they say prayer is authorizing God to interfere with the affairs of your life. And I will say to you that God will not interfere with the affairs of your life unless you involve him. Unless you call him to come and interfere. Unless you seek him to come and change that situation. As long as you are holding on to it, God will not interfere. Authorize him today in the name of Jesus. We pray that tonight we are going to pray a prayer of breakthrough. A prayer that will release many from evil covenant. A prayer that will separate people from covenants that were made by forefathers. A prayer that is going to deliver many. That is going to release people's destinies. People's tomorrow. People's uh, financial status. People's ways of thinking. People's ways of appearance. We believe tonight that prayer is going to touch many and turn people's lives around in the name of Jesus. I believe you are ready to pray with me. I say do not just sit there. Take that time to pray. Proclaim as I proclaim. Because the Holy Spirit gives us utterance differently. Depending on your situation and condition. What, what are some of the things I want us to claim tonight? We know very well that the name of Abraham was changed. He used to be known as Abraham. But he, the God changed his name to Abraham. Which meant a father of nations. And he changed the name of Sarah to Sarah, from Sarai to Sarah, meaning a mother of nations. Tonight we want, after breaking evil covenants pursuing us, we want now to ask God that he may bless us according to that covenant that he made with Abraham. Because he promised to follow it to all the descendants and the generations of Abraham. And we are today's Abraham's generation. Tonight, ask the Lord to change your name. And I want you to take time and read the whole chapter of Genesis 17. You will see the promises that God made. Secondly, I want us to ask God to multiply us exceedingly. Praise the Lord. We want the Lord to multiply us exceedingly. That in everything we do, we will see multiplication. We will see addition and not subtraction. That if you begin a business, Today you are hawking. Tomorrow you will be having your own shop. And the days that follow, people will see your supermarket or your wholesale or your big shop. That you will not remain in that position. Thirdly, we are going to ask God to grant us our possession. We know that God promised Abraham that his descendants shall be given Canaan. A particular land that God had promised them. We want to ask God tonight to give us our possession. The possession that he has promised, that we shall enjoy good health, that blessings shall be our portion. And again, we are also going to pray that God may hear all our cries and grant us our heart's desire. We are going to ask God to make us exceedingly fruitful, that we will be exceedingly fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We must pray these prayers. They are very powerful prayers. 
and you know you are a partaker if you have Christ in you. And if you do not have Christ in you, let me lead you into this prayer and welcome you to the, uh, to the family of kings and queens and princes and princesses. I want to welcome you tonight. If you know you have not given your heart to Christ, so let me, let me help you to make this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come before you that you may forgive me of all my sins. I know that you died and you went to the cross for my sake. You carried my sins that I may be forgiven. Today, I acknowledge my sins. I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Let me be known as a child of the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that from today onwards, I will not operate as I used to. Now, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I welcome you. Let's move together. Now we are children of the same Father. I want you now to take authority in the mighty name of Jesus. First of all, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. And ask the Lord to protect you from any counterattacks of the enemy. Any powers of darkness that can attack you out of this prayer. Cover yourself and your family and your possession with the blood of Jesus. Father, we worship your name. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you, our King. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. You have authored our faith. We trust in you. We believe in you. We have put our hope in you. There is no other God but you. We have forsaken the gods of our forefathers. We have put away their idols. We have rejected their altars. Now we are connected to your altar. We are your children. We sacrifice to you. We heed to your commands. We take your instruction. They have become part of us. They have become our daily bread. They are our daily doing. Father God, we come to you because we know that you are the ultimate help that we need. The power that is above all powers. Lord, we ask you for the blood of Jesus to cover us as we make this prayer. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Forgive us of all our sins. Wipe away, uh, wipe away all our shortcomings and our, our sins and our mistakes in the name of Jesus. All the transgressions of our fathers, we repent also on their behalf. We ask you to cover us tonight as we make this prayer that the devil will not dare touch us, that no evil will come against us out of this prayer in the name of Jesus. We pray that every power of the enemy that is targeting us because we have gained this knowledge that it is defeated in Jesus' mighty name. Cover our children, Father. Cover our families. Cover our spouses. Cover our homes. Cover our children. Cover our belongings, our businesses, our workplaces. Father, we ask you to cover them with the blood of Jesus. Let there be wellness all around us in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, we take authority against the power of the enemy, every work of the evil one that he has fashioned against us. Lord God, we know that covenants are binding, and we know that, Lord, that there are covenants that our forefathers made against our lives. They are troubling us today. They are making us fail today. They are making us not go back far today. Father, we take authority. We break those covenants by the power in the name of Jesus, we destroy the authorities. We bring the authorities down. Father, we denounce them. The Bible says that those who are in Christ are new creations. And we, Lord, cut ourselves from the old creation. We come to you all through vine. And we are combined together as one and become a tree of life. Father, God of glory, every death in our life is defeated. Every covenant that has made our marriages fail is broken tonight. We break it by power in the name of Jesus Christ. We break every evil covenant that has pursued our businesses and made us make losses, made our businesses not to grow, made our businesses not to rise higher. Father, we break those covenants and Lord, we declare that those covenants are not part of us in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare 
that we are blessed of the Lord and every evil pronunciations that were made on those shrines, that were made on those altars, every evil vows, every evil promises, every wickedness, every yokes, Lord, they are broken tonight. Every kind of bondage that has pursued us like the children of Israel. Father, we call upon your name and we pray that you may hearken unto our groanings. Hear our cry. Hear this sister who is crying because of our marriage. Hear this brother who is crying because of joblessness. Hear this sister who is crying because of failure in our life. Hear this brother. Hear us, oh Lord. We are your children. Hear all these saints, Lord, who are raising their voices before you. They have been groaning for long. They have been under yokes. They have been under bondages. They have been bound. They have been in prison. They have been, Lord, captivated by the enemy. Father, we are crying and calling upon your name. As the Lord Jesus said, we pray unto you, our Father, who art in heaven. Hear our cry. Hear our groanings. See our helplessness. And come in and help us. Send a helper. Send, Lord, someone to make us be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, as my voice goes uh, through this media, Father, I pray that yokes are going to be broken. Evil covenants are going to come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus, covenants of whatever kind, they are not going to affect us anymore. In the name of Jesus, tonight we stand, Father God of glory, to connect ourselves to you and to say that we are of the covenant of Abraham, the one that you promised to Lord Jehovah honored for all generations and to all the descendants of Abraham. And we know, Father, that you are bound by your word to follow it to fulfillment. The word says, Lord, as we have read in the book of Galatians 3.29, that we are inheritors in those promises because we are in Christ. We have become offsprings of Abraham. We are not just trying to become. We have already become because we have accepted Christ in us. And that is why we want to get rid of every evil covenant against our lives and our children, against our marriages and our businesses, against our education and our careers, against our ministries, against everything that belongs and is called by our name. We want to destroy them by power in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we stand to claim those promises that you have made upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, God of glory, some of us I've been walking around carrying the wrong names, uh, names that have brought limitations in our lives, wrong names that have, Lord, whenever we are called by those names, demons follow us, uh, darkness comes upon our lives. Uh, People who are dead are awakened from their death because then those names belong to them. We come before you right now, Father, to destroy those evil names. And as Lord God, you gave Abraham a new name. May you give us a new name, a name of abundance. May we become fathers of nations. May we become fathers of great people. May we father people of substance. May we father people who are kings. May kings come out of our loins. May lead has come out of us. My Father, let the names that you give unto us make an impact in our lives, Lord. My pray, my Lord and my God, change my name today. Change the name of my viewer today. Whatever, Lord, name they've been labeled with because of their condition and their circumstances. Lord, I separate them from them. Continue proclaiming that your name shall be changed in the name of Jesus. Continue saying, my name shall not remain the same. Wherever our names shall be called, doors shall be opened because the Lord is giving us a new name tonight. Wherever our names shall be called, people shall expect greatness from us. Wherever our names shall be called, Lord, your presence shall flow there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now we want to ask you, our Father, to make us exceedingly fruitful. We pray that that shall be our portion. Whatever we touch shall multiply. Whatever we engage in shall not fail. Whatever we touch shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will see everything we touch blooming. Continue confessing with your mouth that whatever you touch shall bloom. You shall not bring death to whatever you touch. No death shall follow you because the Lord tonight 
Spirit is giving us that promise. In the name of Jesus, let every blessing and let every fruitfulness, Lord Jehovah, that belongs to us, come now. Come now. Come now. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the Lord Jesus came to set the prisoners free and to destroy the work of Satan and to make the one who is in prison to be free. We declare that we are free. Free from the spirit of failure. Free from death. Free from whatever kind of lack. We declare we are blessed and abundance is our portion. We shall see ourselves increasing as the mustard seed grows to be a big tree. Every small thing that we begin shall grow. Our ministries shall grow. Our anointing shall grow. The glory of the Lord upon our lives shall grow. Our faith shall grow. Everything concerning us shall be fruitful. There shall be great. There shall be increase. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that we will attract fruitfulness exceedingly in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty God, we worship your name because you are making us fruitful. Just thank the Lord for making you fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you, Father, because we are going to see extraordinary results. We are going to see this prayer working for us. We are going to see ourselves elevated. We are going to see ourselves conquering. We are going to see ourselves, Lord, being on demand. Oh, Rabbi Zaya. Now, we want to ask the Lord to give us our possession. As we see in the scriptures, the Lord giving the children of Israel, the land of Canaan, we want to ask him now to give us our possession. Everything that he has promised unto us, let it come to pass. May you now begin to pronounce that, that everything that the Lord has promised you possess in the name of Jesus Christ. That if the Lord has promised to take you to uh, different countries this year, proclaim that is your possession and the enemy is not going to take it. To proclaim in the name of Jesus that destiny help us shall locate you. Your evil power from our families who has hindered our fathers from going far. Who has hindered our forefathers from going far. We declare you will not withhold us. We are a people who are of a greater kingdom and of a greater power. Our possessions cannot be sat on by any evil. We proclaim that our possessions belong to us. Our possessions are ours and ours alone. And our children, we shall share with them. We declare that we will not die until we receive that which God has promised. In his word he has said, let the poor say that they are rich. We proclaim that we are rich. Let the sick say they are healed. Now we proclaim that we are healed. Let those who are in pain proclaim that they are free. Free of that pain in the mighty name of Jesus. There is power in what we proclaim. The Lord has said whatever we proclaim upon ourselves it shall be. And the Lord we say, as you said, we say we are rich, we pronounce that. Lord, your promise that these possessions shall be ours and our children's and it shall be everlasting. And I pray, Father, the possessions that you have released tonight to us, they will not just be ours alone, but they shall be ours and our children's. In the mighty name of Jesus, the children that we have already birthed and they are the, the ones that are yet to come. Father, Lord, they shall also possess of these great blessings and possessions. So the Bible says that a righteous man releases a blessing for his children's children. Father, I pray that these possessions shall be ours. Our blessings shall remain. They shall not be eaten by the moth anymore. They shall not be swallowed by the devourer anymore. They shall not be eaten by the evil one anymore. But I proclaim, Father, they shall be ours and our children. In the mighty name of Jesus an everlasting possession as you said unto the children of Israel. Up to day they are occupying the land that you gave unto them. Every enemy that tries to overtake them, Lord, you make them conquer us, Lord, against their enemies. Father, I pray for that abundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Release it upon this viewer who is believing you, Lord, not to retire a barren person, but to retire with abundance. Father, may you grant it unto them. We declare Jehovah 
that we will not be demoted in our jobs. Demotion in a, is not our position. We pray even us as wives, we will not be demoted like Vashti. Vashti was demoted by Esther. Father, we declare that this evil will not come upon us. And we pray, Father, even our husbands will not suffer like Haman suffered. The Lord, they will make right decisions. They will come to the right thinking. They will not go outside of your will. They will remain in your will in Jesus' mighty name. They will not go against your word. We pray for these men and these women that they will remain true in Jesus' mighty name. We shall gain favor and favor shall be our portion. Everywhere we go, we will see favor. We will experience favor. We will taste favor. We will even touch favor. We will see people favoring us. People of great classes, people who are higher than us, of great status, they are going to favor us, Lord. Even when we walk in a crowd, your favor shall just locate us for that blessing and breakthrough, for that glory and power, for that anointing. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. My Father, I worship and I declare that you are good. I know that you are powerful and you're mighty. Separate us from failure, my Father. I know many of us have failed before and they are afraid to start again. Now I speak to you who has failed. Receive the grace to start again. Receive the grace to move on. Receive the grace to fly on eagle's wing. Now you have been renewed. Your power has been renewed like that of an eagle. Arise now and begin again. You failed before that but now you will not fail because you are a partaker of Abraham's blessings in Jesus mighty name you are connected to the tree that never dries you are a fruitful vine I declare to you that from now onwards you will not fail your business will not fail your career will not fail your children will not fail your marriage will not fail you will not fail in your school in the name of Jesus Christ Ira basa kata la mazeta la baka ya tele kabazoya rika bara bashela bazonta ribo kuzaya taya in the mighty name of Jesus you will not you are not born to be a failure Lord I speak to this viewer tonight they are no longer going to experience failure in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Father we thank you Father Lord that we may be released from every evil back that we may be released from every evil background that we may be released Lord and make us exceedingly great change our names Father may we become as you want us to become in the name of Jesus Christ we pronounce now that we are blessed and not cursed I want you to make these pronunciations with me. I want you to say, I am blessed and not cast. I am the first and not the last. I am above and not below. I shall go far. I shall prevail. I shall be called great. I shall be a wise counselor. I shall speak of the exceeding greatness of the Lord. People shall look at my life and admire it. People shall look at me and see me glowing. People shall rise and come to my light. There shall be no darkness in me. There shall not be no defeat in me. Shame is not my portion. The Lord covers me with honor. The Lord covers me with greatness. The garment of beauty is upon me. The garment of glowing is upon me. The glory of the Lord is over me. In Jesus mighty name. Do you understand that there is power in your mouth? And as you are pronounced, may it be so. And may it be upon me too. In Jesus mighty name. We thank you our Father for making us exceedingly great. For changing our names from beggars to riches. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for changing our names from failures to being a people who are successful. In the name of Jesus, we have heard of great names in this land. We are grateful because we are going to be part of those great men. People shall read about us. People shall ask of us because of the greatness that you placed upon us. Thank you, my Lord and my God. My Lord, I worship your name. I give you all the glory. Now that we have made a covenant with you, may we remain on this covenant. 
not only us but also our children and the generations to come. I pray, Father, that our children shall never depart from this covenant that we have made with you tonight. Our children shall be planted on your altar. Their generations shall be planted on your altar. The enemy shall never uproot them. The evil one shall never uproot them. They will be, Lord, a people who are exemplary. Well, I bless you, my Father, and I worship you. When we are not there anymore, hold our children's hand and let them stand with this covenant. Let them remain with this covenant. May you be reminded all the time of the covenant that you have made with us. The covenant that you made with, with Abraham. The same way you were reminded, Father, when the children of Israel groaned. Oh Lord, when they were in Egypt under bondage. I pray, Lord, even when we are not here now, that, Lord, the groaning of our children shall remind you, Lord, of this covenant that we have made tonight with you. Wherever they are when they are far from us, may you be reminded every time they call upon your name that you will come first, Lord, and save them and make them great and make them more than conquerors and make them excel and make them prosper in Jesus' mighty name. And let's all say together a great amen. Amen and amen and amen. Wow, we bless the Lord. What a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. This is where we receive the impossible. And I believe you have received that which you considered impossible, that which has been considered impossible in your family. Today you are going to rise higher and higher. Do not forsake to make this prayer. Continue to be a prayerful person and you will see results. A prayerful person commands results. And any time you continue to pray, you will see the enemy uh, standing from wherever he was, standing from your seat and your position, and you taking over. In Jesus' mighty name. I salute you and I bless you. I recognize you all who have been viewing. Our top fan, Laura Shindi. I can see that you are our top fan. I thank you for watching. Thank you, Shail Kelly. It's a blessing. As you promised to continue watching and you have always been watching. I thank God for you. Thank you for everybody else who has been tuning and praying with us. It is not in vain. There is a reward. God bless you and have a wonderful night. God bless you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.